Black History Studies South African Film Festival Week 4. The final piece of the four weeks of film festival held here at the View Cinema in Wood Green. We're going to go over now and have a look at the last film, a screening of Amandla, a Revolution in Four Part Harmony, and as usual, we're going to get some views from the film goers. All right, we've just come from watching a film, Amandla, A Revolution in Four Part Harmony. Mm. Could you tell us your thoughts on what, after seeing that film? Um, revolution, uprising, uh, more revolution, more uprising, more blood spilling. Yeah, more vic uh, I don't know, just, just, just an uprising of African people, which is relevant even to today, um, then, and probably even continuing. You know, so yeah, yeah, good film, good vibration. What was happening there was I was barking up my street as an artist. I have done several pieces on the subject, and um, I think it was very informative and interesting. And I commend you and what you're doing. Okay, why do you think that that what you saw on the screen today is resonates with black people, no matter which part of the globe we are in? Uh, I think um, it has to do with the, the black struggle, especially the apartheid situation there in Southern Africa, which I still still uh, think it's not the end of the, situ the situation today, but it's on the, well on the way, especially since Mandela was released from prison. I loved it. Uh, being a very sentimental person regarding African people, um, it touched me very much. Um, I was very sentimental, I was very emotional, I was very tearful. Um, because this is about me. I was born in Jamaica, I live in England. I've never been to a Zania. But I feel the pain of a Zania, because I am a Zania. A Zania is me. Jamaica is a Zania. A Zania is Jamaica. Brazil is a Zania. Ghana is a Zania. Nigeria is a Zania. America is a Zania. England is a Zania. We're all a Zania. So, I felt that pain and I am not too much of a man to say that I was tearful. Um, the fact of the matter is that it reflected a, one of the deep pains that we've experienced and um, um, yeah, I couldn't help but express myself in the way that I did. Um, being a poet yourself, is there any part of the film that you saw that you can really identify with as a poet going through struggle? Well, most of it, you know, I find, you know, as I said before, inspiring. And there are so many information that I could use, you know, in my work, you know? And uh, I want to see the other parts, <laughs> you know? Was there any part of the movie that really touched you that you can remember that you would like to speak about to us? Well, when I, when I saw the like you, Masakela, and uh, Mira Makeba talking about when they were in exile and the lady was talking about when um, she had her baby in prison and now she's an MP, that I was saying to my friend that, man, that's something else, isn't it? You know, and uh, most of it, you know, moved me, you know? So you're going to drop some bars on us now? What would you like? Um, something about South Africa, if you have anything. Something no, about I've, Nelson Mandela. I've, I've got one that uh, goes. It's called Your Hopes and Dreams. Sure. To realize your goals, to satisfy your heart and soul, never give up on your hopes and dreams. No matter how hard your life may seem, life can be funny. But with faith and belief, there is nothing you can't achieve. Never give up on your hopes and dreams. Zoom. I th thought it was a beautiful movie. Um, I think it's the best movie I've seen this year. Um, just because of the way that it shows the deep connections between music and politics and the deep and the importance of music to the struggle in South Africa. And I just thought being able to uh, being able to see people who were actively involved in it, whether they were in exile or they're part of the military wing of the ANC or whether they were like um, sort of like cultural performers. Um, it was just great to see how they all unified and connected through music and just how powerful the lyrics were as well when they were recounting their memories there's one woman in particular i can't remember her name but when she was just doing her spoken word the fury that was coming like you could see in her eyes while she was delivering it just added that extra power and it just sort of yeah it, it really hit me emotionally
it, it was it was very interesting ed- educational um it was a window into how important song was in south africa um you saw the the stories of of artists who were on the front line and and you also saw how those songs affected people um how the police responded to those songs um how the songs gave people courage and um reinforced the struggle people on the front line doing toy toy um, marching it's actually a great um exercise <laughs> i saw yeah they said uh, those dances kept people fit you know you're doing those things in the mountain you sh- and then you do that in front of the police and they kind of wary to hear these group of young people marching shouting and it's, it's it's so powerful to watch that um it'll probably be put in plays later or even is right now because those um deep painful things become great poetic art masterpieces um, but um, it was good to see um, people's lives and that f- film left me um, feeling sad and happy at the same time. That's the ending it left me on because there was never justice. There was, uh, there was music and um, there was people creating laughter afterwards, but um, there was never justice there. I'm thinking in terms of the title, uh, The Revolution in Four Part mm-hmm. Harmony, and I'm thinking the four parts of the harmony, mm-hmm. there's a the music and there's a the politics, mm-hmm. there's the economics yeah. and, and whatever, and we don't have that kind of harmony. In this country, yeah, um, this is, there's, um, I suppose in South Africa or America, um, everyone is a South African, and that's their, their collective identity. In America, we are all African Americans. In this country, we're Nigerian, we're Jamaican, we're the so-and-so, or the, there's, there's so many different fractures within the community. Um, so um, th- those are things which, um, things and factors which um, have an impact. Well, he said it at the beginning of the film, really, where the message in the music, so even where people couldn't read or write or didn't have access to certain education, they could listen to the music and immediately understand, you know, what it was about and what they needed to do. So that kind of wrapped it up for me right at the beginning of the movie. There are things that we can learn from that, and and for me, the, the solidarity, the unity... Um, and how people, because that's lacking, that's what we're we're lacking here at the moment, the unity um, within the community. And actually, some would ask, is there a community? But for me, that's solidarity. And the music, as we saw in the, over all of the films, I think, um, somewhere in there you had music, even, um, this is the last one in the series, but within all of them there was that element so that brought the people together but we are I mean they know somebody made a comment about um, they didn't think the regime really understood or knew at the time that the influence and the impact of the music but and that's just it they get it now (laughs) and so in that way the music that is being made here that um, speaks to that we're not hearing it or it's not being promoted and it's not mainstream so so yeah it was wonderful absolutely beautiful in growing up um, you know with the news we always had news flash and so forth and I did recognize some of the songs you see so I was singing I don't know exactly the exact words but it was nice and just bringing back the memories of um, Sharksville Everything there that I saw, I recognised some of it as well. But the opening of the film made me shudder because to see the exhuming the body, it was like, wow, you know. But that brother I never heard of before, so it was great to know that he had written loads of the songs and it was just an embodiment of the foundation that gave you strength and when you hear the songs, you sing for a bit, but then, like, my body's moving, you know, you song movement energy beautiful absolutely fantastic well i guess that's the four part harmony because i was tapping my foot and yeah, and i remember oh, those songs and yes. it it doesn't seem important what the words are no, because you just right. you just want to really join in the fight you know? <laughs> yeah when i um sister said that the south african film festival will be on i thought okay that would be interesting and then you automatically think of queen mother um, winnie mandela and our father Mandela, you know, and I was like, okay, but I didn't expect all the different aspects, the political side, um, the peoples within the country, and also 
them looking out of South Africa and we looking into South Africa, for me, it was really a journey. I'm there physically in the studio, you know, the theatre, but I was there physically in spirit, you know, and I felt it because I didn't realise the bond was so strong. So who knows with the connection with South Africa, but we're all family. Um, the four weeks every week was just a treat to come up and watch each and every one. I haven't missed one and it was powerful. Um, we can learn so much more and as the brother said in the last film here is that they had gone through so much but yet they didn't burn down the country. So we can do things in so many different ways and if each individual as something positive when you put that together that's the reason why they have the fist and I didn't understand that I've always seen it and I'm saying yeah power to the people not knowing that's what mandala means and who wears it for the people but then you see it's all single four fingers and a thumb but if you put it together it's a unit and it's a oneness and that helped me to understand that you can't do um, everything for yourself as an individual, but together we can move a mountain. It's just, it was a brilliant film, looking at how the songs of the time helped the revolution, helped the anti-apartheid movement, how people, comrades from that period used the songs to galvanize the people. It was beautiful to see thousands of people all singing the same song dancing in unison it was just beautiful and looking at the sh at, at the struggle as well because even though they had songs and different things going on the actual the actual what they went through being shot at the police brutality all different things um, having to bury family members and it's just horrible to see but you can see how they use the mu music and the, and the dance to keep them going. It was it was very good. It was an inspirational film because, like I was saying to a sister inside, that a lot of a lot of our struggles continue to this day, and we we can be creative with the mediums out there to use songs to highlight what's going on in the community as well. So when people are listening to certain songs that young people are making, they're telling them what exactly what's going on, a reflection of their life. So we must listen to some of these songs and see it from different perspectives. I like the, the the title that says a revolution in four part harmony. Mm. You know, you can have songs, but yeah. they're not harmonizing no. with the struggle. No. You can have lyrics, but they're not building us up and harmonizing with what we have to do. And I was saying to one of the people that I interviewed in there, mm. that sometimes hearing those songs, you don't even know what they're saying, but the no. strength of it just yeah, yeah. captures you. Yeah, yeah, because even I, I, I was sitting in there watching the film, and some some of the um, songs that were sung, I know the melodies. And I can, I can, I know the little bits of the words, but I don't know what they're saying. But you could, you could, as I don't know, I was sitting there and I was like, yeah, I can get up and march. I feel ready now because the music is moving you and the songs as well. Mm -hmm. And what they're singing about and how it impacted on them. And you see the different mu musicians such as uh, Mira McCabe and her life story as well. Amazing lady, beautiful sister. And what she and what she went through in terms of um, being a civil rights activist in America and highlighting what's going on within South Africa globally as well through her music and she's a lady that doesn't get enough recognition in my eyes and we just have uh, we just have to keep doing this ourselves. Okay, this is the last week of the South African yes, Film Festival. It just came round and Very it quick. you know it yeah. slam dunked and now it yeah. is it's over. <laughs> Tell us yeah. how you're feeling about that. <sighs> Been a bit sad because I, I have enjoyed organising this um, South African Film Festival. I've gone around to so many events, leafleting, talking to people, emails, Facebooks, Twitters, everything, just telling people about this event today. And we are actually making history because we actually hold, held the first South African Film Festival in Wood Green. So at least the work that we're doing will go down in the history books of Haringey as well. And, and we actually have uncovered some of the hidden histories. We've had young people in the audience as well who didn't know about what was going on in South Africa. We have elders that didn't know um, what was going on in South Africa. So we're actually trying to bridge the gap as well. And a lot of people have been coming to the film festival and actually talking to each other from outside, outside the cinema in, in the foyer as well. So that's really nice seeing people that don't know each other before they came here talking together. We just came down the stairs and two young people that were in the presentation are still talking about the film. And that's, a, that's, a, that's an achievement as well, because they're actually talking about what they're seeing as well. So it's, it's been a beautiful experience as well. Got to give thanks to um, The View Cinema 
and also Film London and putting their, putting their confidence in Black History Studies to actually deliver the film festival. So we give thanks to them as well. What next for Black History Studies? We'll be organising a um, our Kwanzaa event, our first Black History Studies Kwanzaa event. We're going to be doing that in December, on 27th of December of Lambeth Town Hall. Um, we've got our Black History Month events, loads of different events in Black History Month. We're supporting Natural November event in November. Um, lots of things going on. 2015, ready planning events in that year as well. So lots of things going on for Black History Studies. So watch this space. www.blackhistorystudies.com. Yes. Zoom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs>